This is truth be told. That not only are there reptilians here. New evidence of UFO fleets. We were close to nuclear war. To help you transform so that you can live your highest truth. We're not being told just because we're not ready for it. The stations of frequency, vibrational. The, uh, I was a homicide detective with LAPD. UFOs increase. Um, visitations. Mercury retrograde? A total solar eclipse? 2024 is crazy. Well, today we have an extraordinary guest, renowned astrologer Rick Levine. Astrology offers a window into the cosmic influences that shape our lives, our planet, and even the paranormal phenomenon that intrigues us all. And in today's episode, we're focusing on three significant astrological events of 2024. Mercury retrograde, the solar eclipse, and the new moons that happen each month of the year and their impact both in the astrological and paranormal spheres. Rick Levine, a master in the field of astrology, joins us to talk about these celestial occurrences and bringing his expertise, knowledge, and wisdom when it comes to astrology and how astrology affects our lives on a daily basis. So whether you're an astrology enthusiast, paranormal investigator, or simply curious about the intersection of the two, you're in for a treat. I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Join us as Rick Levine helps us connect the dots between the movements of the heavens and the mysteries of the earth. Let's unravel the secrets of 2024 together. Welcome, Rick Levine. Hello, hello, Rick. Well, hello, Tony. So nice <laughs> to be here with you. You know, it's funny. We were before we went on air. I said, uh, you know, we both were at Conscious Life Expo, and it was so busy we didn't get to actually meet or see each other. So to, it's it's an honor to have you on the show and and uh, get to talk about you. It's all about you today. <laughs> it was pretty crazy there. I don't know what the final count was, but there were well over ten thousand people there that weekend. Ooh. Yeah, no. It, when we went, it was packed and. Uh, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming for an empath like myself. So uh, I, I, I stayed for a while and then we came back again the following day just to <laughs> give myself a break. But uh, I had a great time and saw some great friends that I haven't seen for a while. And uh, But, uh, but it, it, what I love about it, it's like this. You know, it's just me and you here. But uh, events like that, uh, uh, you know, we bring all all us people that are like-minded uh, in the, the spiritual realm and paranormal world and uh, get to share ideas and theories. and, and uh, Yeah, but it's not just you and I here today. It's you and I and the cosmos. Oh, there we go. There we go. I love it. I love it. In fact, that was cos uh, Cosmic cos Crossroads is, uh, is one of our theme today. So You know, the origin of the word cosmos, most people don't realize it comes from a Greek word, and the Greeks often had words that meant two different things, but unlike English, the two different things that the words meant were connected. And the word cosmo meant order, like things oh. being in order, but it also meant beauty. Oh, I and didn't know that. the modern word cosmetic actually has the same etymological derivation as the cosmos or cosmology or macrocosm or microcosm because it had to do with the beautiful order. And in modern terms, we look at cosmetics as something that hides ugliness hmm. rather than the Greek way of a cosmetic was something that brought out the natural beauty. I think next time, if I ever have any uh, plastic surgery, I'll just say I'm, I had cosmic uh, enhancement. Cosmic surgery, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you here because, uh, you know, astrology, there's so many different versions, you know, from all around the world, uh, uh, thousands of years uh, uh, through history that uh, many, many cultures have uh, used astrology. Uh, so what is your, your um, I guess, expertise in? Is there like a uh, modern astrology? Is there like a ancient wisdom behind it? What What is your take on uh, what you studied and how? Uh, where is Where does it come from? Well, I, I'm I'm kind of like like an intellectual Robin Hood. I <laughs> steal from the rich and give to the poor. <laughs> you know, it's like there's good pieces of information in pretty much every branch of astrology, right. of of even most religions and so on. There's 
there's good to be taken from it. It's mm-hmm. the rest that I like to leave behind. And and I think ultimately for me, astrology is very simple. And um, you could say that it goes back to uh, the Egyptian truth giver, Hermes Trismegistus, who is Hermes the thrice, three times great, hmm. um, who uh, apparently left his wisdom in something called the Emerald, Emerald Tablet, in which uh, that's the origin of the statement, as above, so below. But it's not really that. That implies cause and effect. The full statement is, as above, so below. The within of things is as the without of things. Because, in fact, now this is me speaking, not that, because they are one. It's the the, the cosmos up there and the microcosm and our unconscious and down here mm-hmm. are not reflections of one another. Right. They are the same damn thing. And we're just surfing on this middle wave of like a interference pattern of these frequencies. And so for me, astrology is very simple. It's stated in the Lord's Prayer, right. although, unfortunately, most people who recite the world's, uh, the, the world's prayer, the <laughs> Lord's Prayer, don't believe in what they say yeah. because they're instructed not to. But what they say is, it is done on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. That's that's sim- simply it. Astrology is simply the study or the awareness of the correlation of upstairs and downstairs are one and the same thing. Wow. Well, you know, in 2024, we hear a lot of a lot of people. I think with TikTok and social media, we've we've got to see more a younger generation coming into play when it comes to astrology, psychics, you know, numerologists, all this stuff. Uh, it's almost like it's to me, it's a science. It's a to how you approach it. A lot of people go online and they they teach themselves how to do it, but is it safe to do that or is it not I'm not going to say ethical, but I I sometimes I'm really weary about, you know, many of the people out there nowadays. Uh what does it take to really understand astrology to to know that you're giving the proper information to the people that are coming to you for advice or for direction compared to some people that are just reading it online and they don't really, they're just reading the page. <laughs> it's a great question and a tricky question because on one level, it doesn't take being an astrologer at all to give people useful and good information. Right. Astrology is an amazing crutch. We <laughs> can lean on it to help us um, connect with what is going on. Right. But for many people, they don't need astrology at all. They, they're just intuitively in, in, in touch. Now, the problem, though, becomes that someone goes out and reads a book and declares themselves an astrologer. Right. Right. But, you know, this is not a new problem. Johannes Kepler, back in the late 1500s, uh, wrote a, a, a treatise called Tertium Intervenus, which is Latin for tertium three intervenus in between right and it really means third man in the middle and it's his treatise about how he felt stuck between this popular astrology that he hated the fact that that people at his in his age were using astrology basically to decide when to go to war and whether or not they were going to get laid. <laughs> this is some things never change, <laughs> and so um, and so we have that same problem today. That people who astrology has a, a PR problem because most people think astrology is not what astrology is. Right. And and although there's a part of me that wants to dismiss that completely. That's kind of like the gateway drug that people use to get into real astrology. Mm. Most people get into astrology because they read this popular stuff that is surface, it's general. I mean, look, I wrote a daily horoscope column for 20 years. Wow. I had tens of mil- I had about 10 to 15, 20 million readers every day. My daily column was wow. on AOL, MySpace, Huffington Post. Google, Yahoo, LA Times. I mean, it was all uh, AOL. It was all over the internet. Um, And so I know what that astrology is about, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Does it do more harm than good? 
I don't know. For some people, I think it does harm because they think that's all there is to astrology. Right, right. On the other hand, if it becomes something that makes you begin to think, huh, maybe there is something to being, you know, a Taurus versus a Gemini or right. whatever, then maybe it gets people interested. I mean, like many people of my age, I got into astrology because I read Linda Goodman's Sun Signs oh my gosh, back yeah. in the 60s. And so, uh, you know... It's a good question, and I don't have an answer for it. Well, I, I'm glad that you can say that because a lot of people may want to just try to throw out there an answer that uh, might get them in trouble later. But uh, it's it. I think that's a that's a great response. And you know, a kid went to a, a priest once for confession, and kind of a teenager, you know, an upstart right, right. rebel. And 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 he said to the priest, he goes, "Before we start confession, Father, I just want to make sure that you know I don't believe in God." And the priest says, oh, that's okay. I don't believe in God either. And they kind of freak the kid out. And the kid goes, what do you mean you don't believe in God? Then the priest said, I don't believe in the God that you don't believe in. And so when people tell me they don't believe in astrology, I go, yeah, me neither. I don't believe in the astrology you don't believe in. <laughs> That's a good. That's a. I'm gonna use that if I ever get the when it comes to the paranormal. That's that's a good answer. Public domain. Yeah. Use yeah. It away. Right. Right. <laughs> well, you know the the practices that we use in 2024 versus ancient civilizations. Uh, so, how has it changed? I mean, I. I mean, you, you weren't there. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. <laughs> okay, you were. You were in the past life. In the past life. But how has like culture and science and philosophy and all that stuff, how, how has it changed even since you started? But how do you feel it's changed since the ancient times, the astrology? Got three hours? I, I got a lot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's another really, really good and an important question and one that people don't ask enough. I mean, my contemporaries uh, don't ask it enough. Hmm. And um, look, the ancients knew something was going on. They had their finger on that pulse. Right. Um, but the ancients, when they saw an eclipse, it freaked the hell out of them because <laughs> they had no idea what was going on. For we, you know, for for for, for um, us, for us moderners, we at least know the celestial mechanics. And eclipses are not scary from that standpoint. Right. And so we have a sense of what's going on up there, out there, that our ancestors didn't. That's number one. Number two, and maybe more importantly, is the um, the integration of computers has changed everything. I mean, look, when I started astrology, I've been doing astrology since my college years in the late 60s, early 70s. Right. And um, every chart that I did, it took two to three hours to calculate it by hand to figure out all the angles and mm -hmm, all the mm -hmm. aspects in the houses and looking up latitude and longitude and then looking up time zone corrections. And I mean, it was a chore. Now you can give me your birth date, place and time. And in about as long as it takes you to say those things, I can put them into my computer, hit a button, and I have more data at my disposal right, right. than ancients would have had ever. Right. And so that's changed the name of the game completely for two reasons. One, it allows people who are math challenged or even enumerate to get into astrology, mm -hmm. whereas before you had to know how to do logarithms and solve spherical triangles and then do interpolation. Now you push a button, you got a chart. Right, it's right. It's changed it hugely. Secondly, because astrology is about correlation, it's given us the ability to have a huge database of information. Um, there are sites online that have 70,000 birth data, 70,000 uh, char um, charts, where I can go and I can look up, uh, um, give me the birth data for Mozart, for Joan of Arc, for whatever, and I can get in that database a short biography their birth data, their chart, the accuracy of the data, whether it was validated or whether it's approximate or whether it's just a no time known. Mm. And so it's changed the name of the game completely. And then that the use of the computers has not only created an online compu uh, community where people all over the world don't feel isolated, 
um, they feel connected to other people doing astrology. That's why so many young people are into astrology right, right. because anyone, everyone can get that data, but then it affords the researcher the ability to do mathematical analysis that the ancients couldn't have even dreamed of. Um, there's a whole branch of modern astrology called harmonic analysis. Think of an oscilloscope with high frequency, you know, the sine curves and whatever. And astrologers are basically doing that kind of mathematics <laughs> on huge databases of information that create harmonicus. Planetary movement is just low frequency vibration. It's like music. Except instead of music that I can hear with my ear, like A above middle C, which is concert A, which is 440 cycles per second. Right. The planets are like the moon is 13 cycles a year. Saturn is three cycles a century. Pluto is four cycles a millennium. Wow. And, but there's still frequency. And so we dance to the music, but we don't hear it. And yet we can do this harmonic analysis on it. So, yeah, totally different world, totally different world from 2000 years ago to today. And that's just my opening paragraph. Right, right, right. And that was 10 minutes. So let's go another two, and f two hours and 50 minutes. Um, uh, for people tuning in, uh, we have R Rick Levine on, astrologer. Uh, you can go to his Instagram, Rick, uh, Rick uh, Merlin. Uh, and what what is your website? Just so people, if they want to tap over um, the Best way to get in touch w with me is, uh, well, um, Rick Levine Astrologer mm -hmm. is where you can get onto my mailing list, Rick, uh, www.ricklevineastrologer.com. Perfect. Uh, but I'm all over YouTube. I do a free monthly update once a month, and that's youtube.com uh, slash um, at Rick Levine, and that's the way that YouTube does the things now. But you can go to YouTube and look for Rick Levine and my monthly, I've been doing this now for, geez, 15 years. Wow. And um, uh, yeah, and, 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 and yet the astrology I do is less, uh, I, I, every month I get someone posting on my site, just tell me what's going on. I don't want to know the technical stuff. <laughs> and my astrology is, I'm, I'm an astrologer's astrologer. I'm interested in teaching people how to do astrology I have fundamental astrology courses on Astrology Hub, astrologyhub.com. Um, I have a number of courses there for taking people through the fundamentals. Right. Uh, thousands of people have been through that uh, course. I mean, tens of thousands of people watch my my YouTube videos every month. That's great. And and yet I'm not going to say, Aries, this is going to be a good month. Taurus, you got. The, I'm past that. I'm I'm I. There are other people that do that astrology. Right. I'm much more interested in in doing quote unquote real astrology and i love that i love that because uh, you know a lot of times the the reader digest version is great for the you know the quickie but uh yeah. sometimes we want to dive in a little bit deeper on uh what uh where we're going and in fact for the people that are listening right now you know we're we're going to be talking about i'm going to ask rick about the upcoming eclipse and you know inside of mercury retrograde with you know, with the new moon coming up, you know, that it's a, I think a lot of us are feeling the impact of all that. And I, I do want to ask you about that. So everybody stick around. Uh, and uh, we have some people already saying, can you talk about the Mercury retrograde? Yes. After this question, because <laughs> uh, I do want to uh, ask this amazing expert about astrology. And, you know, right now with you know, science and technology really dominating, and especially AI is really kicking in. Uh, how how does an astrologer remain relevant? How, how what you know, and what's what's the what's the next role of an astrologer as technology and AI really starts to, you know, take over many many areas of our existence? <laughs> Again, another good question, and if I had an answer. <laughs> uh, for real, I would follow it with, don't believe me, it's just my opinion, no one knows. Right. I, you know, this is part of the magic of this moment that we're living yeah. in. We're yeah. at a turning point. And, and anyone who says that they know what's going on, anyone who says that they know what's around the corner, doesn't. And, and, and although astrology can certainly help us get a, a, a perspective, um, I, I, prediction, I think, is 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 a waste of time. I yeah. mean, quite frankly, 
I mean, I I know that a lot of people do astrology because they want to predict the future. I know a lot of people go to astrologers because they want to know what's going to happen. I'll tell you what's going to happen in your future. It depends on what you do right now in this moment, hmm. because the future is not um, written in stone any more than the past is. And the past is not written in stone either. That's why we go to therapy. We go to therapy to change our past so wow. we can change the choices that we have in the present moment so we can alter our trajectory into wow. the future. And so so astrology as a crutch to do nothing. Oh, I can't do that. I'm a Virgo. Oh, right, no, I'm right. not like that. I'm a Sagittarius. That That's that's crap, because okay. what astrology shows us is the course of least resistance and once we become aware of that, then we have choices. So what is AI going to do to astrology? I don't know. I'm a science fiction fan. I've read all kinds of stuff on this ongoing battle that apparently has lasted for hundreds of millions of years in science fiction. Right, right. Between the organics and the mechanicals. You know, we are organic. We're carbon-based life. Mm -hmm. But there is intelligence that is most likely not carbon based. I mean, granite has its own form of intelligence. Right. Everything right. in the universe, quantum physicists will tell us, everything, the universe is intelligent. And so I don't think that, I, I think that, that we will become irrelevant if we hold on to our denial, our ignorance, and our stupidity, which unfortunately seems to be pretty rampant right yeah. now around the planet. But I'm 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 not an optimist. I'm a possibilist. Um, and from that standpoint, I'm not a pessimist either. I think that artificial intelligence is not artificial. It's simply not carbon based. Right. It's not organic as we know organic, that there can be silicon based um, intelligence. And I think that if we can figure out some way to work with it, it will enhance us incredibly uh, incredibly in a, in a very powerful manner, but, but I don't know what's around the corner. I do know that right now to understand what's going on out there in the real world, I think that there are two, um, what's, what's the word, um, uh, acronym, uh, uh, yeah, an, an acronym, an acronym, an acronym, acronym. Uh, two acronyms, and they're basically, um, AI or really ASI and ET. And the AI is artificial intelligence. ASI is the important one. That's artificial superintelligence. And ET is obviously ET. We know what that is. And that's where we're going. And what we do and how we manage our path from here to there, you know, people who think that evolution has existed for billions of years and now it's got humans and we're the end point of evolution, it's hubris. It's stupidity. We are a part of a much larger, grander scale, mm -hmm. and we're riding this wave in this present moment where we think this present moment is all there is, and in some ways it is all there is, but I don't know what the answer to your question is. I'm, I'm doing great today. You've asked I all think these you're doing amazing. I'm saying I don't have a clue. <laughs> I'm, I'm along for the ride like what you What a guest. No, it's good. <laughs> Well, it's funny that, you know, we, we the, the, the Bible says, you know, cr God created man in his image, but yet we're creating AI in our image, at least our thought process. And, you know, unfortunately, they're going, it's AI is going to excel past our whatever we are. Um, so, you know, we, we don't know when that's going to happen, but they, there are predictions not too much further in the f future that, you know, being able yeah, to... I think I think orangutans created humans in their image. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, do you mind taking a quick question from the chat room? Uh, Absolutely not. All right, <laughs> all right. So we have Supernova. Uh, thank you, Supernova, and it says, "What is the relationship between Chinese zodiac and astrology, and what does astrology tell us about the Chinese zodiac?" Okay, so um, again, all these questions are good questions. Um, the Chinese zodiac, it's it's interesting because the Chinese were interested in observing stars. They were interested in their their observations of things like supernovas were really important, but they did not do astrology by looking at the movement of the planets in the way that we do. Their astrology is more like a numerology in as much as it's a system based upon divisions of 12 
and and 12 is an incredibly important number in sacred geometry because you can divide it in half in thirds and in quarters and that makes it really easy to manage that's why we use 12 for time because we can have a quarter hour or half hour and it's really easy to to work with 12 hmm. but the thing about the chinese zodiac is that it really looks at a 12 year cycle which is actually the cycle of jupiter and jupiter is the planet that has to do its its archetypal um, significance has to do with social reality. It's expansive. It's beyond the personal. And Chinese uh, consciousness is really oriented toward the individual's placement within the society. So what does the two zodiacs have in common? They're both based on 12. They both have animals or totems for each of those 12 um, you know, you know, pieces. And yet beyond that, they're really not the same kind of system. They're not based upon the same mechanics. Western astrology, or what I call, uh, uh, to me, Chinese astrology is Chinese um, symbolism, but it's not astrology as we do it compared to the Indian astrology, the East Indian, you know, India astrology, right. Hindu or Vedic astrology which is like the astrology we moderners do. It is based upon the movement of the planets, but Chinese astrology is not. And yet, when you look at it, it seems to have relevance. And I think that brings up something that is important that as an astrologer early on, I didn't want to admit, but I think as an adult, <laughs> as a mature adult, I have to admit, and that is it really doesn't matter much what we study. If we study it long enough, we can find meaning in it. Oh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Now that I'm starting to get a little more mold on my edge of my cheese here, uh, that, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I think well, the term is long in the tooth. <laughs> well, my tooth getting really long. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, okay, so this is, uh, this is a big topic right now. You know, three times a year, sometimes four times a year, we have a Mercury retrograde. This time around, we have a Mercury retrograde with a, a full solar eclipse. Okay, so Mercury sometimes by itself can, you know, throw some little, you know, the, the link fence or the, the chains on the bicycle gets kind of, the spokes will get a little dented here and there, uh, and communication can be disrupted. How does how does Mercury in a solar eclipse, how is that going to make the impact? Because Monday is only just a few days away. What What's the difference than a regular Mercury retrograde? Yeah, and, and I should say in the spirit of full astrological disclosure um, that it's my birthday also. Oh, wow. Um, well, and, and so is that a good um, thing? technically it's tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but um, but but there's actually three things relevant here. Um, there's the Mercury retrograde, which I want to come back to in just a moment. Yeah. There is the total solar eclipse, which is has a path across the United States, making it particularly relevant to those of us living here in the United States. But there's a third and maybe possibly most important event of 2024, and that is the once every 14 year alignment of Jupiter. Remember, I said it takes Jupiter mm -hmm. 12 years to go around the sun once. It takes Uranus 84 years to go around the sun once, which means that in 12 years, Jupiter goes around once, and then it takes another couple of years for it to catch up to Uranus, and that happens on April 20th. And this actually is probably the most significant event of the year, and the fact that all three of these are happening from a cosmic point of view at the same moment in time, at least in the same month, makes April the turning point of 2024. Astrologers have been talking about April of 2024 since April of 2023, looking forward, saying this is the month. Now, I have friends who are calling this eclipse a retroclipse, <laughs> which is a great <laughs> word because the eclipse is occurring while Mercury is retrograde. But let me clear up something about Mercury retrograde, because like astrology in general, Mercury retrograde gets a lot of bad press. It, it does. And there's a reason why, but it's bad press. It's not a bad time. You see, planets are like radio stations. 
they're they're like frequency generators and mercury generates a frequency that it goes around the sun four times a year every 88 days mercury makes a complete you know cycle around the sun right which means that it catches up to the earth about three times every year you say three or four times it's never four times in one year it can be the end the end of one from the year before or the beginning of one from the year next <laughs> but it's that crossover point that makes it three or four times a year and so what happens is that when any planet gets closer to earth than it is at other times in its cycle whether it's mercury or venus they're inside the orbit of earth or whether it's Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, they're outside the orbit of Earth. Whenever those planets get closer to Earth, mm -hmm. the perspective is that it looks like they're going backwards because, because we're so close to it that, that the perspective changes. Right. And I, we could talk more about that mechanically as to how that works, but, it, but it's something that is just, it's a mechanical thing. Now, Planets are like radio stations. And when they're when when you're next door to a 50,000 watt radio transmitter, it's like you barely need to tune your radio. Right. That station's <laughs> going to come blasting through. But as you get farther away from it driving away in your car, there comes a point where you almost you can't tune into it and then you lose the radio station. So, when a planet goes retrograde, very simply, it means it's louder than normal. Now, what happens is that when something gets too loud, we as humans have this psychological mechanism that we do, and that is we shut it down. Hmm. It gets in the way. We go into denial. We, we, we close it off. We, we, we immediately tuck it away, and, we, and, we, and it's too much. Right. And so when happen, what happens with Mercury, because Mercury, again, every planet, for those people who are watching who don't know much about astrology, every planet is connected with a kind of an archetype, a mythology, a sense of symbolism. And Mercury, as the Greeks called Mercury the messenger of the gods, Mercury is about how we think. It's how we talk. Mercury is 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 language. It's interchange. It's it's me talking and then me listening. It's that back and forth because from Earth's point of view, Mercury going around the sun looks like it's going back and forth. It's really going around the sun, but in the sky it looks like this. Hmm. And so Mercury is the planet that's connected with how we send and receive information. When it comes between the Earth and the sun three or four times a year, it's so close to the earth that it's so loud that we think everything we're thinking is so important. We get distracted by it. We make stupid decisions. Right. We don't read the contract. We, 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 we read the big print and we sign it without reading it. We go out looking for a car and we think, yeah, I'm going to go buy a car. I'm going to start looking today. And the first car we see is this incredible purple Porsche that's on sale. <laughs> and we go, Oh my God, I got to have it. And you buy it. And, on the way home, you realize, oh, shit, I got a wife and a dog. What the hell am I going to do with them? <laughs> you know, but that's why that's why Mercury retrograde Mercury retrograde gets a bad rap is because we get so tied up in the moment that we lose our sense of direction, our sense of purpose. We, we get confused by what's going on. And that Mercury is looking like it's going backwards in the sky. Huh. We're often recycling old thoughts and old ideas, but there's nothing wrong with Mercury retrograde. It's basically the cosmos way of telling us that this is time to rethink what we already thought was true. Wow. So we get to look at things from a different perspective. Now, you tie that with the eclipse and the jupiter uranus conjunction and all of a sudden you have what might be called the perfect cosmological storm hmm. and that's why this month is so important it's not a bad month it's a bad month to do nothing and it's a bad month to change everything in your life all at once because it's going to take time for this energy to settle out it's a fantastic month to gain awareness about what you thought you already knew, but don't. What popped into my head, I've heard this before from people, 
a person's personality doesn't change if somebody comes into money. It just enhances who you already are. So does a Mercury kind of just enhance how you're, not necessarily your personality, what you're going through? Like if you're feeling down, if you're feeling sorrow, sorry for yourself, is it just really enhancing kind of what you're feeling at the moment when it kicks in? It's all based on on sacred geometry and it can enhance it right but it can also block it it can conflict with it right it can annoy it it can do a number of things based upon whether the energy is flowing or moving and none of what it does is either good or bad <laughs> it's just different it's how we react and the consequences of our response that makes things good or bad well, uh, one of our, our loyal listeners, you know, he put in the chat room his birth date. I'm not, I, I don't, not asking you to do a reading, but I, I'm just saying w your birthday is for sure a set in stone. Like, you know, I was born December 7, 1969 at 855. So that was set in stone. Like you said, your past is not defined and your, your future is not necessarily, you know, set in stone either. But if somebody comes to you or, you know, or somebody's looking for a change and sometimes hearing, you know, your words through astrology can help them go on a, a different direction or a, a different path in life. I, <laughs> how am I trying to say this? How how does one start? How does one, if they can't come to Rick Levine or Rachel Lang, who is a good friend of ours, you know, each mutual friend of ours. So how how oh, can Rachel Rachel is a dear friend and just I love a, her. a wonderful human being. I yeah, love Rachel. I love her. She had a, a podcast with me for years. So yeah, I actually visited her when I was down in L.A. Stayed at her place in Ohio. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, I so. love her and and her wife. Uh, but how does one begin? I, like you said, we don't want to just read, but we don't want them to just go off of what a, a chart says. How does one really start to grasp a hold of what the change they need to do, but using astrology to, to boost them to another level in their life? I, I think that the Buddhist wisdom of the only thing that we can change mm -hmm. ever is our awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that astrology gives us the ability to um, to to become aware of things that we weren't aware of. You know, it, the Greeks said there were three types of fate. Um, the, the first type, the word that they used was hamarmene, which is the fate that you can't change. Right. Um, if I have my cell phone and I hold it 10 feet above a tile floor or cement and drop it, it'll break. Right. That's hamarmene. Um, we live in a body. We age. That's hamarmene. It's the fate that just happens. Gravity. You know, it's not just a good idea. It's the law. That's, <laughs> right. that's hamarmene. <laughs> then there's the fate of agnoia, which is where most of us live most of the time. And that's the fate of um, of without knowing. Noia, gnosis, mm -hmm. to know, the Gnostics. Agnoia means without knowing. It's, if I'm driving my car and I'm blindfolded and I get to a cliff and I drive off the cliff, my fate is I, right. I, I didn't know. And that's where most of us live most of the time. The third type of fate is a fate called pro noia, which is actually the title of a book by fellow astrologer Rob Brezhny. And pro noia is the fate of kind of knowing the trajectory that you're on so that you can enhance it. Hmm. And it's what someone might call co-creating the future. It's not just about making a wish list or stating your intentions and thinking they'll happen. Right. It's making that wish list, stating your intentions that are part of the path that you're already on, that's fine tuning it at a time that the wave is catching you in that direction. So pro noia is what astrology ascribes towards enhancing. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we better that? Well, we can begin by learning a little bit about our chart. You know, not just our sun sign, mm -hmm. you know, the I'm an Aries, you're a Sagittarius, whatever that that might be. Um, 
but the fact is that it's easy these days to go online to a site like astro.com right um and you can do your own chart and say where's my moon and just learning that there's a difference between the sun and the moon they're the two brightest things in the sky and i and so just beginning to explore that is a good way to get into it you don't need to see an astrologer to begin that journey it takes a little bit of work but we're all on a different path we have the same players but they all play differently they all dress up in different costumes they're all right. different from they're all from different nation states and speak different languages but they're the same players and so first learning those players then the next piece is beginning to understand that those players the planets are constantly moving around in their own rhythms that are all very different at different cycles and when one of those players comes to visit your birth chart your natal chart, mm -hmm. natal just means birth, that those pieces in your being are either being enhanced, as you said earlier, or conflicted or magnified or irritated mm -hmm. or annoyed, um, you know, or blocked or whatever, that beginning to become aware of that, all it does is it opens our awareness to see that we have choices. You see, water, this is a great, great analogy. Water finds its own level. When, when it rains, water has one job, and that's to find sea level. And eventually, it'll do that. Some water will find sea level by just raining right into the ocean. Right. <laughs> Some will fall up in the high mountains of Tibet, and it may be 100 million years until the, the climate changes, that water melts, then it becomes streams, and it begins running down the mountains. When water runs down a mountain, it might go right out to the sea, but but humans might build a dam or a beaver might build a dam that uses that water hmm. either for hydroelectric power or to fertilize a field or you know to to cultivate a, a, you know agriculture. Right. But eventually, the water will find its way to the sea. Yoga, and and I don't mean just sitting in postures, but yoga in its true meaning, uh, yoga to harness the power of the oxen by yoking it basically allows us to take this natural force, what Freud called the id, this 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 life force that just, just goes, mm -hmm. and building it by discipline into patterns that use the energy for constructive means on the energy's way to finding sea level. Hmm. So that's what we do in astrology. And, and personally... I'm not into prediction. I why, why tell someone that they're going to get married in 15 years or 12 years and have three kids? What the hell use is that? <laughs> right. I want, when I work with a client and my form of teaching astrology is to empower people to understand that they're creating karma, their future at every moment in the present and by expanding their awareness in the present, whether their awareness is about their personal life, their history, their screwed up family background, things that have happened to them, um, who they are, their physical limitations, where they think humans came from, whether we came from apes or God created us in seven days, or whether we came from Arcturus, all right. these things have to do with as I expand and open my awareness, it gives me more choices to how I manage the flowing water in the present moment. Wow. That was deep. That was deep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Probably not the answer that most people want to hear right, about astrology. Right. They want to know whether or not they're going to get laid or whether <laughs> they're going to have a good day today. <laughs> I'm married, so that probably... Not gonna, not gonna happen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, you well, know, hopefully it happens just at home. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> right. Right. Uh, all right. So two, two more questions. Unfortunately, our time is running up and running, uh, running out fast. I have to. Well, have, we, we can do, we can do a repeat performance. I would love so that. I would love that. I know you don't like making predictions, but you know, this year is a election year. We have two wars. We got infighting in America. I mean, there's craziness all over the world all over the world yeah it's not just here it's all over the world what is the chart saying not necessarily you're predicting who's going to win this or what's that but what is the chart saying that 2024 it, you know it seems like we're in a chaotic time so what are the astrology saying about you know what in the short version 
Um, and I can either give you a link or if people. Yeah, please. Go, please. You know, I mean, I, I've, I've done several YouTube videos on the larger picture that are much deeper dives. But in a short paragraph, it's very it's very simple. The slower moving planetary cycles create um, openings or changes in human evolution, in 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 cultural changes and so on. In the mid 1960s, there was an alignment of Uranus and Pluto in the mid 60s that created the artifact that we all call the 60s. And that was Uranus, 84 years, lining up with Pluto, 250 years, 248 years, actually, that created whatever that was. A very important astrological time. Um in the 2010, 2012 to 2015, mm -hmm. those same two planets made a 90 degree angle and 90 degree angles are conflict, they're stress, they're, it's like when two things are at crossroads, that's mm -hmm. an astrological square, that's a 90 degree angle. And Uranus and Pluto did that from 2012 to 2015 and all the things from the 60s, the sex, drugs, rock and roll, gay marriage, <laughs> liberation demonstrations in the street arab spring um um a, a legalization of marijuana i mean all these things um were back in our consciousness civil rights mid 60s to the um 2012 2015 all back so those two things are are key to understanding where we are now into that we have a completely different cycle that i have an hour and a half long presentation specifically on this one cycle and i call it waltz time for civilization because three times a century waltz one two three one <laughs> two, three. three times a century saturn in its nearly 30 year cycle around the sun catches up to pluto which only goes around the sun once every 248 years and part of what we're going through right now, Pluto is a 248 year cycle. <laughs> Every year when the sun from Earth's point of view returns to where it looked like it was when we were born, that's our birthday. We celebrate it. Astrologers celebrate Saturn when it returns at around age 29 and a half <laughs> to where it was when we were born. Saturn is a planet of maturity. It's when we have to grow up under 30 over 30. They're different. Now, Pluto returns to where it was in 248 years. 248 years ago was July of 1776. Oh, wow. The United States is having its first Pluto birthday. Now, unlike the sun, which is celebration, light, illumination, our birthday, right. unlike Saturn, which is about responsibility growing up, uh, taking our place in the real world at age 29, 30, and then again at age 57, 58, right. that period of time, maturity, Pluto is the planet of the underworld, hmm. that which is hidden. It's about death and rebirth. It's not physical death necessarily. It's about all of that that happens in the invisible realms. And so the United States, Pluto is about deconstruction, reconstruction. Mm -hmm. We are right on time wow. to do the work that we're doing as difficult and as complicated and as uncertain and as unsettling as it is, the United States is having its Pluto return. Happy Pluto birthday. <laughs> okay, so now into that, we add this Saturn every 33 to 38 years catching up with Pluto right. and boundaries realign. Every, I mean, um, they did it in the summer of, of 1914 within a week of the shots that um, Duke Ferdinand was assassinated began World War One. They did it within a few weeks of um, of of India um, getting freedom um, from from England and Pakistan and mm -hmm. India, the se separation and 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 a half a million people were killed in those battle wars between the Muslims and, and the Hindus and, you know, between Pakistan and India. Um, and also, interestingly enough, because we allow uh, a year on either side of these exact events, right. that 1947, um, August of 1947 alignment, within a year of either side of it, the United Nations was formed and Palestine disappeared. Wow. Israel was created. And, and so 
this cycle repeated again by the way the halfway points like the opposite points you know the new moon is right. like when they line up 1914 1947 um and then january of 20 january of 2020 within 12 hours of the wuhan virus being announced and oh the my gosh genome being announced and and the fiasco of 2020 that's a separate story right. we're not doing that rabbit hole right. today <laughs> right but <laughs> at the halfway points are just as important 1931 that was when hitler came to power mussolini came to power um stalin came to power J japan invaded china it was the depression midst of the depression here in the united states 1931 saturn pluto opposition um saturn and pluto were opposed in the fall of 2001 anything there oh just the world trade tower bombing right another rabbit hole we're not going to. <laughs> right <laughs> so the point is that in 2020 march of 2020 in particular was the month that never seemed to end for most people we are now coming out of that period of time of the quarantine right. of the of, of of the intensity of the realignments that were mm -hmm. occurring and and it's coming out of that period of time and a few too many things to go into here technically but 2024 is the breakout from that period of time hmm. it's happening all over the world the bifurcation of everything you can Pick see it. one of 10 different topics and you have people with the united states is just an example of the fact that humanity has become schizophrenic <laughs> we've externalized our nervous system yeah we, we have an exo nervous system. We call it the World Wide Web. We flipped out. Our nervous system is out there mm -hmm. and it's schizophrenic. You know, with neurosis, you can cure neurosis through therapy, through conversation. But with 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 a psychosis, conversation doesn't fix it. Right. It just makes the the bifurcation more and more and more and more and more extreme. And yet something's got to resolve. And that's what 2024 is about. And it's not going to cure, but but I but we're like an alloy that's like when you melt copper and tin, they're both pliable, right? And when you melt them and they and they solidify and they create uh, bronze, that you can't melt that again and resolidify it. It's bronze. Hmm. It's it's. We are at a point in 2024 where the bifurcation is so great that things are going to happen. Some of it being elections, not just in the United States, but in countries all around the world where, where there's going to be like a solidification of the alloy. Wow. And I don't know where we're going to end up. I know where I'd like us to end up, but you know, you can take five of your favorite topics and you'll probably end up being satisfied with one or two or maybe three of them but they're so intertwined, you know, politics really does make strange bedfellows That's... <laughs> that no one's going to be completely happy. Right. And yet yeah. things are going to solidify. So what's going to happen this year? What's my astrological prediction? My astrological prediction is that if you sit on your ass and do nothing about what you think is important, your worst dreams will come true. That's all I can say. Was that is, the is, mic is, drop? is that this is about being <laughs> this is about doing my favorite line i close almost everything i do online with this statement is think cosmically that's mm -hmm. astrology expand your awareness out as far as you can think cosmically but act locally it's not think globally act locally think cosmically but if you don't act locally if you don't take care of of, of the people in your life, if you don't take care of your own business, if you don't bring those cosmic awarenesses that, oh my God, this is the most cosmic person I ever met, but he beats his kids. Right, right. Bullshit, that doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta take the cosmic stuff and act locally. So what's my call for 2024? It's very simple. Think cosmically, but act locally. Where's this election gonna take us? I don't know where it'll take us, but I know that it will take us to where we either want to be or don't want to be because sometimes that which we fear is what we manifest. And so we have to get beyond our fears, face them, and we have to work towards manifesting what it is that we want to be in the outer world. And the best way to do that is to do that locally. Love it. And last fun question. 
uh, since we brought up uh, America, what zodiac sign would America fall under? Well, it, <laughs> if you if you look at a birthday, which is certainly an important, there is a great uh, discussion in the academic astrological world as to whether the Earth, as to whether the United States was born on July fourth, seventeen seventy six. Or, or whether it was mm -hmm. born at the Constitution, right. at the signing of the Constitution um, in 19, uh, in, I'm sorry, in 17, I think it was 76, 1783, I think it was. I may be off a year or two there. Um, most people use the Declaration of Independence. That right. was the, it was like whacking the baby on the butt and the baby <laughs> yelling. Wah! That was the moment of the birth of the United States. And so from that standpoint, the United States is a, cancer by sun mm. sign july 4th which means that it's self-protective it wants to take care of its home and its family it certainly does that mm -hmm. it's afraid of being seen for what it really is because cancers often feel vulnerable but on top of that um it also has other things going on that make it very loud sagittarius rising it wants to have a big voice in the outer world and so, yeah, there's a lot of work that's been done on the United States' birth chart, um, and it's a whole branch of astrology called mundane astrology, which is not mundane, meaning, oh, that's so mundane, right, it's right. boring. It comes from a Latin word, mundus, which means the world. Hmm. And world astrology is a big deal. Um, the best book, if anyone is interested in this, is a book by a man named Richard Tarnas called Cosmos and Psyche, and it's one of the most important books ever written. And I don't say that lightly. I've read a lot of important books. Um, it's not an astrology book, but it's basically a book about the history of uh, the world. And, and it looks at it from a point of view of these larger, very low frequency, um, slow moving planets and how they unfold cultural changes. And, and, and so, yeah, this is an important year in the United States is a cancer we celebrate its birthday every july 4th yeah my mom was july 2nd so i knew it was probably a cancer so uh but uh, some people may not have known that and, but... and and so as a it's interesting um you know as a cancerian type person we tend to be especially a cancer mom tends to be a strong mom but also often has feelings that don't express easily oh, because yeah. cancers often feel vulnerable. And so they often have a whole life of emotions that are hidden behind their crab. Cancer is just Latin for crab. Right. It's the, it, it's their hard outer shell. And yet they have claws, <laughs> um, pinchers that don't let go. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mama. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Or, well, yeah. Rick, thank you so much. I really enjoyed uh, our conversation today. I really would love to have you back, uh, you know. And anytime. Any, anytime. I mean, my my life is oriented towards trying to help people become more aware and to figure out ways in which to take that awareness and to apply it locally. And as is probably obvious, we went in a direction that I had no idea where we were going to go today. But it is just the one tip of one tiny iceberg. Oh, for um, sure. And uh, yeah, and if anyone <laughs> is interested on the year overview or that other stuff, I'll make sure that you have those links. And Please in do. Fact, going to Rick, ricklevineastrologer.com, um, they, they can get links to my current YouTube stuff and, and some of these other things. Yeah, his YouTube channel is great, uh, so please uh, support. And Rick, do you have any other uh, like speaking engagements? You coming up? Any festivals, conferences? Oh, anything? Uh, oh, you 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 wouldn't imagine. You can't imagine what I have coming up. I mean, geez, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in Tucson and Sedona in mid um, in in mid May. I'm gonna be speaking at the Northwest Astrology Conference hmm. um, Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to be doing um, participating in a weekend conference at the Omega Institute. Oh wow! Um, in mid, that's just north of New York. Yeah. In um, in uh, June seventh, eighth, ninth, and that's going to be a fantastic weekend. Again, if you go to Rick Levine Astrologer, I'm sorry. If you yeah, if you go to the YouTube channel, this month's YouTube video has a link with all these things okay. on it. I'm going to be in Boston the following weekend, July. 14th i'm sorry june 14th i wow. think it is 
um geez i got uh, busy busy to be speaking at the british conference in in england in, look at you in 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 uh august i'm doing my yearly two-week retreat in india that i'm um, limited to 35 people there's information on that available this is an amazing it's initiation into astrology whether you're a beginner advanced doesn't matter wow it's a two-week immersion in the south end of goa at an ayurvedic healing spa I love this place, and that's in November, uh, late November, early December. Um, I'll be at the Organization for Professional Astrology um, in Park City, Utah, in October. <laughs> I, I mean, that's that's a tip of what I got. Wow! Going. I'm busy. Just go to the website. You'll you'll you <laughs> you asked. Yeah, I know, right? I, you know, I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, appreciate you, and uh, definitely have you back, and uh, can't wait to can't wait to hopefully meet you in person one of these days. So yeah, and to, I'll be at Conscious Life Expo next year. Let's make sure that we have time for a meal, or I would whenever. love that. Maybe I we get together that. with Rachel or or something. It's yeah. nice to meet you online. Perfect. Well, thank you, and Rick. Thank you for the work that you do. Oh. I've watched a number of your other, you know. Uh, uh, videos and 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 listen podcasts and oh, perfect. you know it's Thank it's you. a good group of people. I feel privileged to be in their mix. Oh no, you you fit right into these amazing people because you're one of them. So. Again, thank you, and uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I really appreciate you leaving questions and supporting and sharing the show, leaving great comments and liking and all that and supporting us every week and for the last 13 years. Uh, please uh, follow, subscribe, uh, share our shows. Uh, don't forget on Mondays you have uh, Robert Hensley does the Men Report. Bonnie Burkert does the truth be told transformation uh more of the spiritual side but uh today we had the amazing rick levine on the show for truth be told uh but please 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 take care of yourself and go out and maybe make somebody else happy too so until next time i'm tony sweet bye this has been another episode of truth be told thank you so much for watching recorded live at ubn go studios in burbank california join us on social media Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.